Hi, and welcome to worship. My name is Michelle Hopp, and I serve as the pastor for Community United Methodist Church in Poinet, Wisconsin. Glad you could join me today. We are talking about a summer of love, and not the 1960s version, a summer where we learn to love better, loving our family, loving our community, loving our neighbors. How do we do that? And today we're going to be looking at how do we help our community? And one of the keys to that is share what you have. That is such a powerful thing that we can do. So we're going to be all immersed in sharing what you have today. So let's start with a prayer. God of community and hope, spark our passion. Lead us as we seek to praise, worship, and serve your holy name in spaces near and far. With your guidance, please help us to see that you're strengthening and building community by sharing our gifts. We thank you for feeding our hearts and spirits. Amen. So the scripture that we are using, if you would like to read that on your own, is from John chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. And this is a familiar story to many of you about Jesus feeding 5,000 people from just a little bit of bread and fish. He was able to multiply that. And the reason why he was able to do that is that somebody shared what they had. So we witness to God's love when we share what we have with our community. I recently took my granddaughter to a craft sale at my friend's house and my friend is going through a really rough time. She has a very serious illness and she's having treatments for it and she's not able to work like she used to. And she got a lot of her, her money through her crafts and her craft sales and classes and things. And so she recently held a sale so that she could sell some of her craft supplies and some of the beautiful things she's made so that she could raise money to pay her bills. It's really gotten to that. And so I brought my granddaughter and I had a $50 bill and I plan to just buy, a, you know, a couple of inexpensive things and then give her the money, you share what you have, so that she could, you know, it would help her. It would help her maybe buy some groceries or go towards her electric bill or, or whatever. Well, when my very generous friend who was holding this craft sale discovered that my granddaughter was a beginning crafter who was incredibly enthusiastic and also really gifted at craft making. When she learned that, she got a box and started having her go through, having my granddaughter go through her stuff and giving her things for free. That is a beautiful testimony of sharing what you have. And this woman did not have the money to support herself and yet was giving generosity and reminding my granddaughter that we need to bless other people. Now our church also knows that we can share what we have. We share our building with blessings in a backpack where they can pack um, weekend food for kids. We also have sponsored, or not sponsored, but supported a summer art program. They used our basement, because why not? We want to support, share what we have. We share hot dishes at funerals and potlucks. We share our spare coins to help buy livestock through Heifer Inter International for communities who need this. We share our time serving on church committees and volunteering in other capacities. We share our personal care items in food, food products to stock the, local shell, the shelves of local food pantries. And we allow our community to share with one another by using a sharing chest that's located on our church's front porch. Now in church this week, we are going to hear Sue Falk tell about her vision for the sharing chest. She had been dreaming about this for a while and it has taken different changes, twists and turns, but she is now the person in charge of it. And what we're seeing is the kids 
we think are the ones who are using it the most. There's definitely been movement in the box, but what is missing are the snack items and like granola bars and bags of crackers or chips or things. And so we know hungry kids are using it. And that's the whole idea. People can, can, can use it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If they're hungry, they can come on our porch and help themselves. So Jesus' feeding of the 5,000 teaches us the importance of sharing what we have. So here's, here's I'm going to set the stage for you. Jesus and his disciples were exhausted. They had withdrawn to the wilderness, which wasn't woods um, it, where they lived in, in Judah. It was instead sand. It was desert. It was desolation. They withdrew there to have a little quiet time. But of course, everybody knew about Jesus. Everybody wanted to be around Jesus. So the crowd of people figured out where he was and they went there. And they were eager to hear what he had to teach about and eager to have him heal their loved ones or themselves. And they left in such a hurry that most of them did not pack any food. This proved to be a problem because now they're in the wilderness. They're hungry. There aren't any villages anywhere close where they could go and purchase their own dinner. Now, Jesus saw the, the size of the crowd. And when we say it was 5,000 people, that's not quite true. It was 5,000 men. If you add in women and children, it may have been triple that amount, if not more. And Jesus asked his disciples, so how are we going to feed this crowd? He's kind of testing them a little bit. And Philip is a very practical disciple, and he's quickly doing the math, and he's like, oh my goodness, even if we can find somebody and send them into a town, which is going to take a long time, it's going to cost us six months' wages of a laborer. We don't have that kind of money, Jesus. This is impossible. But then Simon Peter's brother Andrew saw a youth, a young person. So a lot of um, Bible translations call it a young boy, but we don't know. It was a young person. It could have been a boy, could have been a girl. And this youth was carrying five barley loaves and two fish. And Andrew saw a creative possibility. I mean, after all, he knew that Jesus had turned water into wine at that wedding in Cana, right? He knew Jesus can, could do miracles. Perhaps Jesus could do something equally generous with the bread and the fish. So Jesus told his disciples to sit down on the grass. And the scripture tells us there was a lot of grass. That seems unusual in the wilderness, which is mostly sand. What does this abundant, luscious grass remind the people then and us today of? Think about that. What well-known scripture, it's a psalm, I'll help you with that, talks about pastures, talks about grass. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. In the 23rd Psalm, King David proclaims that God cares for us abundantly. But what does that require of us? God isn't a vending machine. God isn't going to just give us everything that we want or pray for. What is required of us? That we share what we have. The young person with the bread and the fish, again, we don't know if it was a boy or a girl, shared what they had. They didn't keep it for themselves, hiding in a corner and eating their food by themselves. They were willing to share it. This miracle could not have happened without this community sharing. Share what you have. Now, this miraculous feeding experience would also have reminded the crowd of their ancestors, the Israelites, who wandered in the wilderness. Remember after they escaped from Pharaoh in Egypt and they wandered in the wilderness? And again, they left in a hurry too. They didn't have any food with them. Not much anyway. They had a little bit. 
And so God blessed them with manna and the manna would fall out of the sky and in the morning, kind of like dew, it would be on the grass. They could gather as much as they needed, but they couldn't gather more than they needed because then it would rot. So that was, a, that was the whole system of manna back in those days. However, this time in the wilderness, no, is it the wilderness again? I love the symbolism in John. The disciples now are taking baskets and filling them with the leftovers of the food the crowd didn't eat. Because Jesus, sure enough, he turned that fish and bread, that small amount into enough to feed the crowd and have leftovers. And this allowed people in the crowd to bring, bring home food, bring it home for their family, have it for themselves to eat along on the path home. You know, when you share what you have, God will use that abundantly. This would have been kind of like when you're at a church potluck and there's, you know, there's always way too much food and the church provides you with take-home containers. Yeah, those are great, aren't they? Or you bring your own Tupperware or whatever it is you bring, and then you load it up for food for later, or you bring it to people, your at-home members who couldn't make it, and give them a meal so they can feel like they were sharing. Share what you have. Now, Pope Francis expressed his views about sharing food in 2013. Here's what he said. We should all remember that throwing food away is like stealing from the tables of the poor, the hungry. When food is shared in a fair way, when no one is deprived, every community can meet the needs of the poorest. Share what you have. My friends, how is God calling you to share what you have to serve the greater community? Take a few moments this week and think about it. Is it crafts? Is it food? Is it your time? Could you volunteer? I know that um, CASA, which is Court Appointed Special Advocates out of Columbia and Dane County, they're looking for adults to be child advocates. You can volunteer in the schools. You can volunteer in the food pantries. You can use your time. You can share of yourself. Even if you don't have enough money or resources to really share, you might even be able to do that. Invite a neighbor over for supper. Think of creative ways that you can share what you have. Let's pray. Generous God, we thank you for our community. We pray for those suffering, those in need, and those without hope. Inspire us to use what you have provided us to overcome the obstacles we face. Give us hearts confident that needs will be met when we bring them before you and direct us in the ways to share what we have with love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go and share what you have with your community. I hope you have a wonderful week. God bless you.